Welcome back to TFT Central. Today we're going to be taking you through the best settings for the MSI MPG 341CQ PX monitor. This is the company's latest 34 inch QD OLED monitor with the 240 hertz refresh rate. If you've got the MAG model with 175 hertz refresh rate, we already have a best settings for that available on this channel as well. The screen is in its factory default settings, so let's open up the main menu and we'll first of all configure the screen for SDR. We'll also come back and do HDR mode in a moment. So in the first section, the GI, the gaming intelligence menu, you can obviously turn any of these things on that you want to use. We're gonna just leave those off for now. The gaming menu has a series of preset modes here. You'll see a range of different preset modes here. These are actually the same or alternatives to what is available in the professional mode menu as well. So you've got pro mode settings here and game mode settings here. They could just as easily be in the same section of the menu, but they've been split into two different categories here, but whichever you activate last will be the one that is active for you. We're going to use the pro mode settings here, and you've got two different options really for SDR content. You can either use the user mode here and that will operate the screen in its full wide gamut and we can configure it from there. So if you don't mind the more vivid and oversaturated colors that the wide gamut mode offers, even for SDR and sRGB content, then you can use the user mode. Or if you prefer to use the sRGB emulation, or for that matter, the Adobe RGB or the DCI-P3 emulation modes, you can use those down at the bottom as well. We'll come back and set up sRGB in a moment. For now, we're going to use the user setting and then we're gonna come into the image section and we're gonna turn brightness down. So we're gonna turn that down to a setting of 30. That will give you a luminance of around 120 nits, which is our typical recommended brightness level. If you want something brighter, you can set this to 43 for 150 nits or 64 for 200 nits. We're gonna leave that at 30 for now. The color temperature, we're going to switch over to the customization option. You'll see the screen goes initially dark and that's because the RGB channels have all been turned down from their default 100 to 50. We're going to bump these all back up to 100 to start with. And then to achieve a white point of around 6,500 Kelvin, we're just going to lower the red channel by two notches. So we've got 98, 100, 100. That should deliver you a white point very close to D65. So that's actually all you need to set up for the user mode. So the screen would then operate in its full wide gamut, as we said. You might want to try out our calibrated ICC profile as well, linked in the description below. That was created to run the screen in its full user mode and then map the colors back to sRGB for color aware applications like Photoshop and so on. So you might want to try that out as well if you're using the user mode. The alternative option is to come back into the professional menu and change the pro mode to sRGB. So that will switch the screen to its sRGB color clamp and the color space will now be mapped nice and closely to the sRGB reference space. So you will notice the colors look less vivid and less saturated, but that is deliberate. If you want higher levels of accuracy for sRGB work and SDR, then you might want to use this mode. You'll see that the color temperature setting is now not available in sRGB mode. We do still have access to the brightness, thankfully. So we're going to reduce that again down to a setting of around 30 for 120 nits, 43 for 150 nits, or 64 for 200 nits. Those are your choices depending on your ambient light conditions and your user preference. And what you can do if you want, you can quickly and easily switch between those two modes in the menu between user and sRGB. We'll come down now as well and have a look at the MSI OLED care options. So ideally you want to turn as many of these on as you can. They will help protect the panel over time and improve longevity. The pixel shift actually can't be turned off. Use whichever setting you find the least distracting or if you don't notice any issues with it, obviously that's fine to leave as it is. The panel protect cycle, the pixel refresh, that kind of thing will run periodically anyway or you'll be prompted to run that. So there's no need to really change that. Static screen detection will dim the screen if it detects a lot of static use, like if you've left it alone for a long period of time, you can control how quickly that kicks in, the time required, how aggressively it reduces the brightness, that kind of thing. Have an experiment with that and see which options you prefer. Multi-logo detection, again, we'll turn that on. 
You can change the reducing level here, one or two. Taskbar detection, again, we'll turn that on. Reducing level, there's three options there. Have an experiment with all of these, and if you notice any problems during your usage, then by all means turn them off or turn the level down. You might need to tweak these just to find a comfortable balance for your usage. Boundary detection we're going to turn on as well. Again, there's three settings there. We'll just go for the middle for now. And that is it for the MSI OLED care section. In this settings menu, there's a couple of things you might want to have a look at. You can come down in here and enable the HDMI CEC feature. That will mean that if you power on an HDMI connected device, like a console, the screen will auto switch over to that input. That's quite handy. You can turn on USB Type-C power delivery if you want to. Those are the two settings in there. Within the gaming section, you can obviously play around with any of these features that you want, the AI vision, the night vision, that kind of thing. You can also turn adapter sync on or off here. If you experience any problems with flicker during VRR situations, then you may want to turn this off or perhaps cap your frame rate in your graphics card. Um, that is available in this section if you want to use that as well. We'll also set the screen up for HDR usage as well. So we've enabled HDR from Windows now. That's triggered the screen into HDR mode, as you can see here. As usual, we'd only recommend enabling HDR in Windows when you want to view actual HDR content for HDR games and video and that kind of thing. Otherwise, leave the screen running in SDR mode. In HDR, you'll see that a lot of the sections are not available. At the moment on this screen, the professional mode that you've selected in SDR does carry through into HDR. So actually you'll want to make sure that if you're running in HDR mode, you're set to the user mode here to operate in the full native gamut of the screen. That's a bug actually that has been fixed now on the 27 inch and 32 inch models in their range. So we'd expect a firmware update to fix that here as well on this new 34 inch model pretty soon. For now, just make sure that you're using the user mode in HDR. You'll see that a lot of the settings are now not available here. The only one really to change is the display HDR mode. You can choose between True Black 400 and Peak 1000 nits. The Peak 1000 mode will allow you to reach up to the full brightness of the panel for smaller highlights and low APL scenes. But actually in practice, the True Black 400 mode does seem to be a little bit brighter in some situations. We've explored that in a load of detail in our article that's linked below, so check that out. But we probably recommend for now experimenting with the two modes for your games and your content and see which one you prefer. It might well vary depending on your user preference, the type of content you're viewing and so on. At the moment, the True Black 400 mode can appear brighter where the scenes are brighter. So have a play around with both of those modes and see which one you like. And that's the screen setup for both SDR and HDR usage. If you want, you can also download our configuration file for the MSI Gaming Intelligence software that will allow you to quickly and easily import all of these recommended settings. That's available and linked below. If you found this video useful, please give us a quick like and don't forget to hit subscribe to stay up to date on all our future monitor news, reviews and other content. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.